I think it's working. Um, hey y'all, it's Monday night. It is January the 26th on a Monday night. Um, I've had a wild, wild day. And so I came in here to read my Bible and I thought I would do a Bible study with you guys. So I hope y'all had a blessed Monday. Um, for some of y'all that already know, um, when we were, when we were in St. Mary's, um, yeah, Amy totaled her car, and May turned around on Saturday night, and she totaled her car. So within seven days, we've had two cars totaled. Both girls are fine, and nobody got hurt in either accident. May's didn't uh, involve another car. She just ran off the side and into a curb. Um, because she got scared, overreacted, and hit a curb, and she had kids in the car with her. There were two girls and a boy, and so I have been just, well, for one, I praise the Lord that they're okay, of course, uh, especially Amy's. She really did a bad job on her car, but I will say that today has been rough. It has just been one thing after the other, and I have just uh, worked really hard to get Amy a car. We finally got a car today. After all the things we've been through, I mean, we got the first car from Carvana. Something was wrong with it. So we, we have seven days to trade. So we traded it for a Ford Focus hatchback. Got it yesterday. Something was wrong with it. So I said, I'm just going to let Carvana pick up these cars. Since I can't drive them first, I'm not going to use Carvana. It probably wouldn't happen to anybody else but me. I don't know why, but God has always uh, let me be like the exception of most of the rules when things happen. So then we go today, and I go to the same place I bought a car from the last three times. I always get their cars from the same place. And I go to him and I buy a car. I'm headed home tonight and he calls me and he says, Tammy. And I said, what? He said, I misspelled your middle name. And so I really need you to come back up here and sign the paperwork tomorrow. So it's still not over. So I have been on the phone with insurance companies and how oh, I've been searching for cars that were low enough to purchase, but good enough to drive. And wow, I told Chris, I said, I cannot wait to get home and just read my Bible and relax and give all of this to God and just say, okay, I'm done. And uh, May has totaled two cars now. So it's very possible that she will not get another car and that she will have to ride a bike and get Ubers. So, you know, Ubers, they come and get you or a taxi, whatever. But we can't, uh, I'm sure we're not going to be able to afford insurance on that child since she's totaled two cars. Granted, they weren't worth a lot of money. That's why they are easy to total, but that's the way it is. Anyway, y'all pray that I keep my sanity and pray that all of this works out. Pray that my kids stay safe. And I look at things always on the positive side. When Amy had her wreck a week and, about a week and a half ago, um, I really did just praise the Lord that she was okay. And when May had the second wreck, of course, I was just like, May, because what she done was just her fault and her not paying attention. And May has ADD. Well, she would call it ADHD. She got all the way through school without having to take medication, but the minute I put her behind the wheel of a car, it was pretty evident that she needed her medication. And as a mother, wanting her to be safe and paying attention, I put her back 
on her medicine. Now, I know people have different opinions on medicines, but I can tell you this, it keeps my daughter safe because she cannot pay attention. Um, when she had the wreck Saturday night, of course she had not taken her medicine that day. If she had had her medicine that day, maybe it wouldn't have happened, but I still look at things on the positive side and that is, I don't know what might've happened the next day or what might've happened the next week. So for some reason, in my opinion, this is how I believe that God is in control of everything, that God found that it would be the smartest thing for me not to have a car right now. Maybe it saves her life from a, a wreck she was going to be in. I have no idea. All I know is I'm not going to look at it negatively. I'm going to look at it positive because I'm just glad they're both safe and Whatever this lesson is that May is having to learn the hard way, and believe me, it's rough on her. Um, for some reason, God wants her to go through that, and she's going to, okay? Um, and the parents, you know what? As frustrated as I was, because what May did was pretty stupid, so the cop thought she might be drunk. And I told I was, you know, telling my sister, I said, you know what? I said, it was four kids in the car. They're in college. None of them had alcohol. None of them were drinking and doing drugs. They just made a silly mistake. She was excited because they were all in the car and she hadn't taken her medicine and she ran into the curb. So I'm just thankful that she's hanging out with people and they weren't drunk because she said, Mama, he took all of our license. And I said, he did? And she said, yeah. And I, and I thought to myself, he probably thinks, you know, they're high because of the mistake that was made. And so I said, May, I said, are you, are you um, high when she called me? And she went, well, no, Mama. And I said, well, I'm just asking you are in college and you have made this crazy mistake driving with people in the car. I, I, I just want to know. She said, no, none of us are. And she didn't get a ticket. He didn't write her a citation. And I guess he figured if she could do that, not drunk, that uh, he would give her a break. <laughs> so anyway, there's positives to it. At least they weren't drinking. At least... You know they're all safe and they didn't get hurt little bruised is all from the airbags may's airbags deployed and when the cars airbags deploy especially a lot of them they 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 just um deem them total because um it's really hard to get all those airbags put back in place to where that they're going to work correctly okay so um it's just been wild, y'all. Wild at my house the last few days. And yes, I'm in the bathroom. You can see my toilet paper roll behind me. Ah! Amy said, Mama, we just got home getting her car. She said, Mama, I've got to have a shower. And I know you want to do your Bible study. I said, I'll go to the bathroom. I'll do it in there. And she said, Okay. And um, she uses the other one, of course. So this is just the quietest place I could get for now. Anyway, y'all pray for us. <laughs> pray that uh, something good starts to happen. And, and, and see, that's what I can't say. I can't say that that's not good, even if it doesn't seem good. Because for all I know, it could be the best thing for us. And may just not even know it. That's how much I trust God. Uh, and I really do. I trust him. And, um, oh, and we didn't have full coverage on May's car anyway, so, but she's going to be in so much trouble with her, with her record. She don't need to have it anyway. She don't even need a car, you know? So we lost the money on that car. Um, but it was paid for. So, <sighs> and that we do have state farm and they did give us enough money to pay for Amy's car. Uh, not our new one, but I can pay off the old one and have just a little bit left. So that was nice too. 
Um, I've been reading in numbers, and numbers um, is about numbers. It is about God counting the people and getting ready to go into battle so that they could defeat and go into the land of Canaan. Okay? Numbers um, is a lot about the tabernacle and the, the 12 tribes of Israel and how those 12 tribes took care of the tabernacle and moved the tabernacle from place to place. Okay? And so I'm just going to hit a few highlights with you tonight. Um, the, they had a census, and um, one included everybody. And then one just included men that were 30 to 50 years old. The ones that were 30 to 50 years old were the ones that were going to go into battle, and they were the stronger ones. They were also, when it was time to move the tabernacle, that was the age group that actually did the lifting of the tabernacle as well. So, uh, and then they had, everybody had their own responsibilities. But I'm just going to just touch on a little bit from, from each little group to kind of just give you a picture. And that is Judah. Judah was the largest tribe, okay? And Judah um, is the tribe that David and Jesus came from. So, um, just a little tidbit for you. It says that then there were the Levites, and we all know that the Levites were the priests, and they were the ones that were that guarded the tabernacle. So you had the tabernacle in the middle, and then you had uh, four groups of three on each side of the tabernacle. Okay, because there were there were twelve tribes. So here's the tabernacle in the middle. So you got three on the north, three on the south, three on the um, east and three on the west and so um and i did that backwards for y'all um and they did different things but the levites were actually um not part of yeah wait a minute yeah that's the way it was and the, the levites they guarded the tabernacle so let's see what it says levites Okay, yeah, I'm right. I was gonna make sure that I tell y'all something crazy. So the Levites were in charge of, um, they also had people that were lay pe people that weren't really part of a tribe, but maybe people who worked for everybody. And those people kind of stayed out away from the other tribes further out. And the tribes, around the tabernacle, and I think this is really interesting, were ranked. They were ranked. So God ranked people. He ranked them. So you had the, the Judah, the tribe of Judah was first. Well, of course, the Levites were the priests. The tribe of Judah, and then, and then when you read about it, he ranks them in order, and that's how they travel, okay? And they travel in order of rank. And the rank, the, the lay people were the last people to be furthest from the tabernacle when they can't and at the back when they traveled. Okay? Um, I think that's really interesting, mainly because in the age of grace that we live in the New Testament, Christ has. Um, done so much that people just don't even realize uh, how much Christ coming changed so many things. And um, how when we live in the age of grace and we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and we're part of the family of God, we're part of the family of God. And how we're pretty much equal um, in the sight of God. Um, when in the Old Testament, they were not equal at all, and they weren't um, looked at the way we are, because when Christ, when we have Christ, and God looks at us, he sees Christ, he sees the blood of Christ, he doesn't see us, because if it were just about us, there's no way we could ever be good enough to be where God is, okay? 
um, no matter what we did, no matter what we said, no matter how we acted, no matter what we wore, nothing can take us there but Jesus Christ. So I just think it's really interesting how they were so ranked then and things are different now. Well, I will say though, there are sins that are ranked differently. A lot of people want to say sin is sin and sin is sin. And when Christ died, he died for every single sin. But there are some sins that are still ranked. Um, also, when we are um, brought before the um, judgment, and that's us who are saved, he is going to judge us on what we did here for him, not our sin, but what did we do here for the cause of Christ? What did we do here for God? And I guarantee you we'll be ranked when we're when that happens, I personally think we'll be ranked and we'll have different positions and we'll do different things when we're in heaven. Um, and I think it's going to be beautiful no matter where we are because we're going to be in heaven. But I still think that we will be ranked. OK, because it's pretty obvious when you read the Old Testament and the way God had it set up to begin with. Um, he was very much into that kind of thing. So you had the Levites that, you know, did guard the tent and um so anyway this even goes so far as to tell you the duties okay so um it says the two principal tasks of the levites included guarding the tabernacle from intruders and um ministering at the tabernacle so they were to transport the tabernacle from place to place. So the whole tribe, I mean, all of the Levites, all of them, had different responsibilities and had to carry different things, okay? So it says um, they had a census for the Levites, and, and then it tells you about their firstborn and the golden calf incident. But then they tell you that the clan numbers, positions, and responsibilities, they were listed in the in the in the census by clans. Okay. And it and it would specify which part of the tabernacle they were responsible for carrying and which side had to guard. So when God gave them all this information, he gave it to Moses, y'all. That's who he gave it to. Um it was used, you know, um, I gotta blink back. It was used to, um, because Moses could go in there and talk to God, okay, into the tabernacle. And God did tell Moses all of this stuff. It says the most privileged were the Kohathites. They camped on the south side, and they were responsible for the ark and the other holy furniture. Now, these are the clans of Levites, okay? So they're Levites, but they just have different names. So they were responsible for the ark and other holy furniture. Next in privileged were the Gershonites. They camped on the west. They were responsible for curtains and hangings. Finally came the mirror the Meritites, no, the Merit Merites, I guess is how you say it. They camped on the north side. They looked after the frames, the pegs, etc. So I mean he had it down to a T. He knew exactly how they were going to take this tabernacle down, who was going to do what job, who was going to carry it when they traveled. These Levites like what I was thinking, they were all priests. So I was thinking, you know, they didn't have to be manly men. They were just counselors. But that's not true. These guys had to be strong. And they had to carry this stuff. And it was a big deal. So um, they weren't just um, supposed to be holy. They were also um, had some physical labor they had to do it said that uh the total number of levites was twenty two thousand, and um so then you had so let's see there was one 
two, three. Would that be right? The, yeah, because Moses and the priests camped on the east side, guarded the tabernacle, sanctuary, and protected Israel. So um, I'm going to show you all this picture. It would probably be backwards on here. I wasn't thinking about that. Is it backwards? Probably. Well, anyway, you could see the different clans and uh, how they camped. And then it says the results of the second census is the one where they just counted the, the men from 30 age, age 30 to 50. And that was for them to get ready for the march into Canaan because they were going to have to fight. Okay. Then he talks a lot about um, cleansing the camp. Okay. After all that, then we get on this thing about cleansing. And how everybody had to be cleansed. Everybody had to be clean. And everybody had to be, um, had to sacrifice. And it talks about the atonements. Uh, the things that were the most unclean were like um, skin conditions, uh, dead people, uh, touching the dead, being around the dead. Um, that kind of stuff. And it says that the unclean are excluded from the tribe and they must live in places such as caves and the wilderness tents. They were separated from the people. So um, that was a big deal as well. Um, and, you know, like today, we would think, oh, my gosh, if somebody had leprosy, you know, it would be so strange for for us to kick them out and and not let them be a part of the people. But that's exactly what God did back then. And I would imagine it keep for one, um, he was doing it for the group as a whole. Okay. So most of us don't ever think about the world as a whole. And most of us, when we want something from God or we need something or we're worried about something, we don't think that God thinks of us as a whole people. We want to, him to think about me, 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 little old me. And so when you see something like this, you see that God had the leprosy out of the camp to protect the other people. Same thing's going on right now. It's not leprosy, but you know what's going on in China. And you know the virus is bad and it's killing people. And now they're having to um, quarantine. They're having to lock down the airports. They're having to do different things to these huge cities that have millions of people um, because of this virus. And there comes a time when you can't just think about the individual anymore. You have to think about all of China and all of the world and not just these people who have contracted the disease. That's what our God did in the Old Testament. And that's what our God still does in our lives. And we don't even know it and we don't even acknowledge it because we want our prayers answered. And we want our life to be the way we think it ought to be. But in reality, God knows what's best for us. Okay. He always knows what's best for us. Um, and even like with May's car, he knows what's best for May. And right now, maybe May don't need a car. And maybe there's a reason for it. And right now, <laughs> you know, maybe... Uh, we may not, you know, with the financially, you know, of course, it's changed things in the house, but but there's a reason for it. And I know that God um, has a reason, so I'm not going to worry. 
and I'm not going to fret and um, I'm not going to be selfish. Okay. So, and a lot of people would be like, well, that's not being selfish. But yes, in a way it is because then we're on that little old me mentality when God has a lot more to do than that. So I just trust, I trust God and I trust, um, and I'm going to say this, some of y'all might think I'm crazy. I trust the spirits, you know, there's a spiritual world and it, and they battle in the spiritual world that we don't even see for God. Um, and praise the Lord. You know, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I have the Holy Spirit. I tell the kids all the time, if they get when they were little and they got scared, I'd say, don't worry. Because the only spirit in our house is the Holy Spirit. Okay? But in all reality, there might be some spirits that the Holy Spirit and these godly spirits are making sure. You know, I remember being a kid, and one of the things my papa said almost every time he prayed, was, would you please put a hedge around my family? A hedge. A layer of protection. And I know God does that. And so um, when my girls had their wrecks, he still had his hedge there. He still had his protection there. And they're okay. And their friends were okay. And I'm thankful, very thankful for that. Um. And I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I was, I was worried because I knew May would get depressed because she couldn't have a car. But she's already asked about her bicycle. So maybe she'll get up and get her bicycle and go somewhere. You know, it might be good for her. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed tonight's Bible study. I have not seen y'all in a couple of uh, weeks. I've been so busy with the house moving. And then we came home and then, you know, I do do Colored Valley Cooks and I got to get a video on and I haven't felt real well. I actually have a urinary tract infection. Um, and this is my third day of antibiotics. So it's just been a rough few days because I have not had a urinary tract infection. I can't even remember the last time. I looked on my patient portal and I couldn't even find the last time I did. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I took an antibiotic for anything other than I used to have to take antibiotics because I was having so many surgeries because I had so many so fast. But it's been a long time since I actually was sick and needed an antibiotic. So I'm thankful. But uh, they do work. And urinary tract infections, and you all all know, they're no fun. And uh, she only gave me, for some reason, uh, she gave me Bactrom, which is for urinary tract, but she only gave me three days worth. And every time I'm not kidding, I take it every 12 hours. So I'm taking it at 12 noon and at 12 midnight because that's about what time we go to bed. And every time it's time to take that medicine, I, my symptoms start up when it's like about, you know, an hour before I take my medicine and they last for an hour or two after I take my medicine. So it's like it's flaring when the antibiotic gets low in my system. So I called them today and I said, look, I'm still having symptoms. So I think y'all better call in something that's going to, you know, get rid of this. So anyway, with that said, I have been a little more tired. And, um, but I'll do it. I'll make it. I'll make it. And I'll have a hard time getting up out of the floor too. But I, but I can do it. Chris helped me get up the last time. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, I can remember being young and those commercials being on TV. And they'd go, I've fallen and I can't get up. And when we were kids, we thought that was so funny. But now that I'm older, it's real. You know, I mean, it's real. I don't know why. But as kids, we just thought that was hilarious. I guess we just couldn't have imagined not being able to get up out the floor. We just thought that was funny. Isn't it, fun? Isn't it weird how we change the old? I mean, it's just unbelievable. But anyway, God is good. And um, he's great. And I'm excited. And we will talk about some more in numbers. Um, I'll probably just talk about the fact that they don't ever make it to Canaan the next time. 
and then we'll probably jump into unless I see something really because it's all it, there's a lot of law in this you know and it's just um, I'll probably jump right into Deuteronomy and I say it wrong I say Deuteronomy it's and my kids think that is so funny and it's Deuteronomy run of me and I say Romity I say Deuteronomy and it's Romany my kids they laugh at everything I say just like some of my fans do and then I put up a video and I even looked up how to spell guarantee to make sure I got it right put up the video thumbnail I don't know if you've seen it or not and I spelled it wrong I spelled it G-A-U instead of G-U-A. And I told Chris, um, I said, oh, my Lord. I said, guarantee. And he just thought that was so funny. But I just sometimes I'm just, I really do talk funny. I guess I do. I hope y'all have a good night. But I'm thankful that I was raised in Polk County as a little country girl. And I'm thankful. Another thing Chris says that he's never heard anybody else say was for espresso. I say ex espresso, and I say especially, and it's supposed to be especially and expression. So there's no X in there. It's S's. He thinks that's so funny. So I, I said, Chris, I said, I'm not the only person. He said he had heard one other person say espresso, but he had never heard anybody say especially. And so I said, I guarantee you if I text my brother, I'm going to text him the two words. I'm going to call him and I'm going to say, Eddie, can you say those two words? He's going to say it like me. And Chris said, no, he won't. I said, yes, he will. And so he called my brother, the one that was on the show and the one that's a pastor. And I said, Eddie, um, I just texted you two words. Could you please pronounce those for me? And he goes, okay, let's see. He goes, well, the first one is espresso. I said, okay. He says, and the second one is especially. <laughs> and I said, Chris just went, but that's the way we grew up saying it. I guess our parents said it, so we said it, and apparently everybody around us said it. And uh, because I'm not the only one that does it, my little brother, that is not the only word I've had to call my little brother and say, um, Eddie, would you say this word? And every single time it happens, he says it like I do. Isn't that funny? Um, I hope I haven't talked y'all's ears off too much. Kamisha says her grandmother had her own language, too. Yeah, my sister is actually helping me some with Colored Valley Cooks, which is a blessing. It's a blessing for her, and it's a blessing for me. And she always said, instead of spaghetti, she would say, uh, skeddy. Skeddy. And Chris's grandmother, Long, lots of times would say the wrong words for things and that's actually she didn't say it because she what couldn't think about the word she said it because that's the word she actually used okay so um it's just funny and, and you know what so many people get on to me on my cooking show um i don't let it get to me i really don't but i just think this is funny um, they get on to me and they say, you know, why aren't you using tongs to flip that chicken so it doesn't splash on you? Or why don't you do this or why don't you do that? And what they don't realize, I'm not kidding. When I was growing up, I remember my mother had a can opener. She had spoons and, and the flip things. My mother didn't own a pair of tongs. My mother didn't have measuring cups. Do you know how my mother, that's why people make such a big deal out of bacon. And my mother could bake, and my granny could too, and they used a teacup, and that's what they measured with. And they would look at the teacup, and they would fill it up to half full, and that was half a teacup. They'd fill it up to full, and that was a cup, and it worked. And, I mean, we didn't have all these things, you know, that people say that you've just got to have. You, you don't have to have them. Now, I ain't going to lie. I like my measuring cups, and I like my tongs. 
um, I'm trying to get used to them because people get on to me for touching stuff and you know um, but I'm just saying we didn't have all that and when we were on family food fight the night that Aisha Curry ate my food and cried I made that fish in a cake pan and I poached it in the oven and they had never seen anything like that so they thought it was gonna taste terrible so when she tasted it and it was delicious she cried and they were like why did you grab a cake pan I said well I was timed and every baking dish was this big I had two little pieces of fish I had to poach it which means it had to be in water so I put it in the cake pan it worked beautifully and uh, I wouldn't train so that I use the perfect utensil as long as the food tastes good we throw it together don't we and of course that's just part of I guess somebody that didn't know any better would just have been like well I've got to he wanted me Grandma Elliot came in the kitchen before I put that fish in the oven he said you see this boiling water on the stove and I said yes he said You're poached fish is I said I know what poached fish is and I'm gonna fix it and I'm not putting it down in that boiling water what I did is I simmered broth with herbs on top of the stovetop brought it to a boil put my fish in a cake pan poured it over the fish put it into the oven for 15 minutes pulled it out and it was spot on then I took a little bit left of the broth that I didn't put in the dish and I made a cream sauce to go over it and so there's always where there's a will there's a way I'm, I'm a firm believer in that never say you can't and where there's a will there's a way um, another thing is I got to witness to the Carvana guy so I might not have got the Carvana car but the guy that delivered the second car was such a baby doll he was um, Puerto Rican good-looking sweet as he could be I started talking to him his stepmother had been just been diagnosed with breast cancer and it was an aggressive type so it's it's very likely that it's the kind I had because she's about the age that I was when I got mine so I got to talk to him about that and then I talked to him about Christ and I asked him about the Bible and I asked him to please read um, a chapter in the Bible for me and I told him which chapter to read so um, even if I didn't get that car Carvana I got to talk to Jose okay so you just never know and he actually went to school growing up he went to a private Catholic school but I mean he's like most guys his age he's close to I would say he was about 26 or 7 you know God right now is the furthest thing from his mind I'm sure um, but by the time he left here I guarantee you he was thinking about God so I told him how much God had blessed us how much he had blessed me and what a blessing um, my life was now and you know that that I overcome you know that I've overcome the 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 sick the sickness that I had to go through and all the things throughout my life and just how much he has richly blessed me and I said you know what I said I, I don't bra I don't want to act like I'm bragging because of me I said it's all because of God I said I'm not taking the credit for it I said you know what I said if you'll just speak up and speak out and not be ashamed of being a Christian God will bless you and so that was a blessing so we'll pray for him tonight and his aunt um, I hope y'all all have a blessed night I know I've talked to y'all too much tonight but it's been a long time since I've been on here so it was time to talk let's see what it says Tammy you are looking very pretty this evening thank you Debbie I got on my new um, eyeshadow that Amy bought me for Christmas um let's see My mama used a tomato can to measure her flour. When she wrote out a recipe for me, it said two tomato cans of flour. <laughs> yeah, 
And I've got one from Granny, and her says one teacup, and it's spelled uh, T E A, one word, cup, C U P. It's so cute. Um, my mama used to bake bread in a coffee can. What about that? Years ago, my mom and her siblings ate homemade lard sandwiches. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we ate mayonnaise sandwiches. We loved, we loved sandwiches with mayonnaise and pineapple. Mama would buy sliced pineapple. She'd feed us that in the summer. Um, how many siblings do I have? And did your mom pass before your cancer? No, my grandmother uh, did, and she was a cancer survivor twice. Um, and so I'm glad, I'm kind of glad she passed before I was diagnosed so she didn't have to worry. And then my mother, that was my dad's mother. And then my mother's mother passed when I was in my early 20s. She passed at age 67. So did my Paul. He was a preacher. That was my mom's dad. His name was JT Howard. And mama passed this past June and she was 75. Okay, so mama outlived her mother and daddy, but now daddy's mother and daddy lived to be 90 and 93. And yes, she made cornbread every day, biscuits every day, loved Crisco shortening, cooked with it all the time, fried most everything in Crisco, and they lived to be 90 and 93 years old. Um, Lorna says, you always keep me company when I'm feeling blue. You are a Georgia peach. <laughs> I guess I really am. That's why when we decided to go down to St. Mary's, I said, Chris, at least we're going to be in Georgia. And I'll still be a Georgia girl, you know? So, I mean, Pensacola was nice. But that little place down there fits me so much better. I'm so much happier down there already, I can tell. Um. I just hope y'all have a blessed night and I will let you guys go. And I'm going to go rest. I need to rest. I got a stupid infection. I need to rest. I ain't been able to rest. Now, I did not do a whole lot on Saturday and Sunday, except just get up and cook. And Chris would video when I cooked, and then I would sit back down. Uh, but today, I've been running all day, and I'm tired. So I don't like to do that because we have had cancer before. You know, it's because your immune system got a little weak. Um, all of us, believe it or not, every single one of us have cancer in our body. Every single one of us. Any one of us has a cell that could go crazy and multiply and turn into cancer. What keeps it from doing that is your immune system. Okay? So when your immune system is down, you should rest. You should rest and not push your body. I've been through a lot of stuff emotionally and um before I was diagnosed. And so now if I get an infection or anything, I rest because I want my body to have plenty of rest so that another one of them crazy cells don't go nuts on me. Does that, I mean, y'all might think that's crazy, but, and another thing I do is I take an aspirin because when my, when, when my cancer had spread, my cancer was in 12 nodes, 12 lymph nodes. And there is a proven, proven thing that if you take an aspirin every night, because the cancer travels through your blood and um, can stick in different places, um, they say that if you take an aspirin every night, if you do get cancer, it's less likely to spread. So I think that's very smart. So I take an aspirin every night. So, um, anyway, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for today. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being that wonderful, awesome, almighty God that we can all rest assured that you are in control. Um, even if we may not like some of the things we go through, we know that you think of us as a whole and you do what's best for us. So I'm going to pray for China because right now that is a large population. Um, a lot of them may not know 
that Jesus Christ came here and died for their sin. And as sad as it may be, um, with a lot of them dying, I'm just, I'm not sure, you know, if they, if they know you um, and know Christ. So we pray for that situation. We pray for those people over there. And we pray for those who are traveling that they will not bring that over here and that we, we will not lose a lot of people in our country. May you put a hedge around us, our families, our country, and um, just bless us because we love you and we want to know more about you and help us be encouraged to speak up and speak out so that we can show others what you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So if I didn't get to do nothing but witness to that guy, even if it took me three cars to get her a car, at least I got to witness to him, right? I was out there for a long time and I enjoyed talking to him. So if for any reason, his stepmother or mother decides to come on this channel because her son told her about me. Can I just say he was a blessing. Y'all have a good night and thanks for watching. Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. Bye. Love ya.